Settle in, motorcycle racing fans, as we head to South Georgia Motorsports Park to get some incredibly valuable lessons from legend Ricky Gadsden. Multi-time champion Ricky Gadsden lighting up the tire on this 2019 Kawasaki ZX10. And if the bike looks bone stock, it's because it is. Just about any motorcycle drag racer will tell you one of the most difficult aspects of the sport is getting a stock wheel-based bike to accelerate as quickly as possible. Let's watch Ricky's technique. Nine oh seven one sixty eight. No wheelie bars, no slick, no air shifter. That's how Ricky gets it done. Settle in because we're going to head back to the pit area of this legend and get some invaluable lessons as to how Ricky goes so fast on a stock wheelbase machine. This man has been racing since the early 80s. Anytime we get a chance to talk to him, it is incredibly valuable. Mr. Marcus, how you doing? What's up, Jack? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. And as we get this instruction from the professor, please leave your feedback, your comments, and your questions below. It's not every day you get inside info from an icon. The multi-time champion showing off his skills, Ricky Gadsden. We got a 2019 ZX10 stock wheelbase the way you like it. We got some great footage of you getting it done up there. You know, we're trying to give people some insight into what it takes to get one of these down the track. What could you pass on? Well, I feel like I don't know what it takes to get it down the track anymore. I mean, this bike is so fast and so frustrating at the same time because it makes 207 horsepower and it's, it's stock wheelbase. So you can't open the throttle till top of second gear. But all the time you're trying to open the throttle. The key to drag racing, of course, and the things I teach people and my students is to get the throttle open as fast as you can, which is literally impossible with a stock wheel-based bike making this much horsepower. Um, and then with that, the front wheel's constantly skimming the ground or off the ground, and then it wants to push the front end out from underneath you. So yesterday I went 905 was my fastest pass at 162 but I could not make a run without cutting gas because I felt like I was gonna crash every run from it pushing the front wheel. So I just gotta get it figured out. This is probably not the time or place to do it since I got all my students and I'm concentrating on, I don't really have the time to sit and, and mess with the ECU and try to tame it down in first gear, but that's literally what I need to do. Well, what I think is cool, You've given me a lot of a lot of help. You've given me a lot of hints. I can't wait to go to your school. But so many people say, hey, put a long swing arm on it, put an air shifter on it. But it's such a challenge it to is. take one of these stock wheelbase bikes and make them go down the racetrack. And you seem to really enjoy that challenge. I do. And and, and uh, I have a swing arm at home, a Roaring Toy swing arm at home. Could have put it on there as soon as I got the bike. But that's not what I want to do. I want to see how fast I can make this 2019 ZX-10R go stock wheelbase at 175 pounds suited. And then I'm gonna put Richard on it and see how fast he goes because Richard also likes stock wheelbase. You know, he hates any of my, one of my school bikes when they're new. And I put arms on them. After I put arms on them, he don't even want to ride them anymore. So, gonna be a lot of fun. Well, one of the things that I love about this bike is the fact that it's so fast. One time, if you could, we had Brock Davidson do this. Could you show me your routine on the bike here, real quick? Stock wheel based bike. Well, with any stock wheel based bike, the key is to, um, and even on even on the 14s with the arms on it, the key is to load the motor. Any free play in the clutch needs to be eliminated. I call it getting into the friction zone. So you have so if, if I put it in gear, I can show you what that means. If I put it in gear, so it's in gear now, right? So all of this here is, is free play. When you're in a friction zone, when you leave in a friction zone, there's en there's engagement. There's where the clutch starts to engage there. So long as the clutch is not creeping on you when you when you set your RPMs, long as the bike isn't creeping on you, you're good. Um, so you leave from there so that when you leave, any initiation of the clutch loads the motor. And that's the key, you have to load the motor. 
because if the RPM goes zin, 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 when you leave, it's going to be a bad run. Because if you let the clutch go, you can get the clutch 90% out your hand. That last 10%, if you let it go too quick, the oh. front end's up in the air. Don't lose that time the slip. Front, the front end's up in the air and the run's wasted. I like it. So the, you have to load the motor. So when you start letting the clutch go, the motor, the RPM need to drop. As you're accelerating, the right and the left hand have to work together. No, the right hand doesn't lead, the left hand doesn't lead. You initiate clutch and throttle at the same exact time, load the motor, get the clutch out your hand, and do everything else with your throttle hand. So you modulate the front wheel with the throttle hand. When the front wheel starts to come up, you stop the throttle hand. And when it starts to come back down, you continue progressive motion of the throttle. One tip I can see from here too, as accentuated by your wedding ring, you got two fingers on the clutch, two fingers on the bike. Is that nope. how you? No. So let's take a look. This, this is how I ride. I ride this way because I use this finger as as my gauge as to don't. If you put most people do this, if they leave from here, they got from here to there uh, where the bike doesn't do anything, but. If you're doing everything right here, from there to there, your throttle hand's moving. So instead of leaving at 5,000 RPMs, by the time you get engagement, you're already at 7,000 RPMs. You wanna leave at whatever target RPM you pick, you wanna leave at that RPM. So if you get rid of the free play, I use my finger to make sure that I don't pull the bar in, but so far, and then I set my clutch to engage right off my finger. So as soon as I initiate clutch, throttle it pulls the rpm down get the clutch out my hand and then the rpm goes back up i love it can i see one time about how fast you would let out the clutch well you, you can't you can't do that people ask me that all the time it's impossible because it's a feel thing it all depends on what the front wheel is doing if the rpms come down if the rpms spike up it's a feel thing but i will tell you that most people's biggest mistakes is that they start slow here because they scared to wheel it, they start slow here. Well, you gotta get a mass of 590 pounds or, or 700 pounds, whatever you're riding. You gotta get that mass to lunge that first 20 feet as quick as possible. So your initial clutch moving is probably 40% quick and then the rest progressive. Interesting. And that's what I was telling you when I was talking to you that day. As hard as it is to believe, you have to be able to do this without doing that. I love it. Let me see that one more time. Your initial movement has to be quick and then the rest. I is love it. One time, let me see what you're doing with the get. How soon do you get that throttle locked? It's going to be the same thing. So we're revving here. Let's say we're at 4% throttle, right? It's going to be that and then that. All depends on what the front wheel is doing. But that initial snap of the throttle has to be snap. Wow. So it's a, it's a quick snap and then that last 20%, that's what the bike's doing, right? No, no, no. No. Remember, depends on what you're riding. Depends on what you're riding. A stock wheelbase bike, you're not gonna snap. So on my school bikes, on my, when I log it, I, I go 100% with the throttle and only 60% with the clutch on the initial movement and then I roll back on the throttle and continue progressive motion of letting the clutch out and then I get back in it on the throttle. It sounds tricky, I know. If you videoed it, you would see. My students seem to think that I leave wide open. Well, I do leave wide open, but not with the clutch. That's just to get the bike to move. And then I pedal the throttle and then continue letting the clutch out. On this is totally different. This one here, you're not gonna start, start with a snap like that. This one here is gonna be all progressive because it's stock wheelbase. So it'll be all progressive. I love it, man. That is that is church. That is so informative. Last question here for you. We could talk about this all day, but this is why we're gonna go to your school. What are you doing with your body? I know in pro stock motorcycle, George Bryce teaches that big, that big lunge, right? But stock wheelbase bike, Way different than a drag bike, yeah, right? Stock wheelbase bike. You want to get your body as far forward, close to the tank as possible. You hunch your back so you can get down, right? You want your weight over the gas tank, right? So when you leave, it's, it's and you're pulling your body down, your feet are back, and I don't worry about 
I only concentrate on these two things in this one. So, and whatever the front wheel is doing is what my throttle hand is doing. Playing with it, playing with it until I get it to level out and then I progressively roll it on and then I jump into my tuck position. I love it. All before that, if you get in the tuck while you're still fighting the front wheel, if you're worried about that, you're taking your focus off of your throttle and clutch coordination, getting it off the line, fighting the front wheel. You just stay here. Run! Then you get down once you get comfortable and you get in. Amazing, my friend. Thank you so much. I can't wait for the school. If people watch this video and they want to find out, hey, how can I go to Ricky's school? What can it? It's Ricky Gadsden Drag Racing School And we'll keep them posted. When you have dates, send them to me. I will. Okay. And uh, any chance the school could roll over to the West Coast? It, West Coast school. It would all depend on um, if we get enough interest. If someone calls me and says, "Listen, I have 12 guys that want to do your school, and we're willing to send you a deposit to make it happen." then that's something that would initiate me to, to fly out there and teach them on their own bikes. I like it. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be worth it for me to drive to the West Coast. I got you, man. Anything you'd like to add here? Uh, just uh, just really proud of my guys this weekend. Uh, they come all the way from India. and uh, India? How do you get hooked up with riders from India? Well, you know, I, I, I do exhibitions in, in different countries, and, and I go out there, and I had drag racing school in India, had drag racing school in, in uh, Trinidad, um, I'm the, so these guys come over and, and the guys from Japan always come over. They come over here and do my drag racing school. So the interest of drag racing is big in other countries, but the venues are not there. The surface is not there. They race on airport runways with no preparation. It's not even, not even a drag strip. So to be able to come here and race at this level against this type of people is very overwhelming to them. But I'm getting them to focus and concentrate and stay in their lane behind their fairing and they're doing very well. You're a great coach. How much do you wish there was a coach like you around when you were coming up to help you with your skills? I, I do. Like I, All my, my coaches, my dad, my brother, they passed away when I was young. So it, it was kind of self-taught. I, I guess it was self-taught because my dad died when I was 13. My brother died when I was 25. Um, I just, I don't know. I just Well, I think in the Gadsden blood, we've got some some pure raw talent flowing through that DNA. You sent me a picture, what, on your dad's bike? How old were you when you were riding his KZ? Oh, like, uh, I mean, you couldn't 11, even reach the ground, right? Yeah, like, like, I was either 11, on his 1300, I was 11, on his 900, I was eight years old. Couldn't reach the ground. My dad would hold the back of the bike up. He would show off for his buddies. Hey, you wanna see my you wanna see my son ride? I was I was always the shortest. I was really, really short. Uh, my mom's 4'11. When my dad died, my mom's 4'11. I was shorter than my mom at 13. Good so Lord. um but he would hold the back of the bike up. I would climb on it, he would be holding it up, I kicked the kickstand up, start it up, and then I'd start slip the cut and get going and he'd let go and I'd ride. As long as I didn't have to stop, I was good. Make a U-turn, come on back, come past the crowd of people that were out there amazed, go down, turn around, and then he was standing in the middle of the street. And I would ride up in between his legs and he'd grab the handlebars from the front side. He grabbed the handlebars as I stopped. And then I'd kick the kickstand down, sit it down, and we got off. God bless your dad, God bless your whole family. Last thing I have, I keep saying last thing, I can talk to you all day. First factory backed rider, you had a Kawasaki full deal. We know sponsorships are a lot tougher in this day and age. I congratulate you, you're on NBC Sports with Caffeine and Octane. Thank you. As for the sponsorship, do you think we could see those come back? The factory's getting involved. To be honest, you want me to be honest with you guys? Absolutely, I want you. brutal honesty. Um, you know, it really wasn't there when I got it. And throughout the course of my 18 years with Kawasaki, there was only a short span in the late 90s, because Kawasaki backed me the way they did, um, they said, hey, it must be something in this that we're missing. So Scott Grigalunas got, got backing from Honda. Uh, Kent Stott started getting backing from Honda. Brock Davidson started getting backing from Suzuki. That was in the 600 Supersport days. But as AMA went away, where you could, where we were all on the umbrella of AMA, the lure of them 
being in it kind of got lost. From 2000, when, when, uh, when, in 2008, when the recession came, everybody backed off everything. Kawasaki even pulled out a drag race. It was only because of my ambassador status that I had reached before that, that I remained relevant. And I figured out a way, me and my wife, we figured out a way to make me relevant and so that I didn't have to race to stay involved with Kawasaki. And because of that, I became the ambassador for the Kawasaki ZX models. And that's the only thing that kept me for 18 years. As far as drag racing, they didn't care about drag racing. They says, here, we're backing you because you're our ambassador. Whatever you want to do, that's on you. But and we support you, but we're not supporting we don't, you. Don't have, we don't have a team. Sure. It's Ricky Gass and we support you, but I don't see it anymore because there's no media outlet, Jack. The biggest thing is there's nowhere to see this except Cycle Drag and 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 Thank you for that. .com. Yeah, sure. There's nowhere to see. You are amazing because you go everywhere on your own dollar because of your love for the sport, and you make it. A, you make people aware. Like I've crossed over our sport to other media to outlets. To, you know, to to Supercross and the road racing. I know all those guys and 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 Cycle World. I've been on the cover of every mainstream magazine. That's how they know about drag racing. There's no more print ads anymore. There's no more cycle world. There's no more sport rider. There's no, everything's internet. And be, only because of guys like you do people even know it exists anymore. That is a problem. We will never get major dollars if they can't see where their money went. Because the key to, to sponsorship is return on investment. If they give you $20,000, you have to show them where you're gonna make them three times their investment for them to make it worth it because that's basically even with these big companies money is not there anymore budgets are super tight thinned out there condensing com uh, departments so I, I, I just really don't see it unless we get prime time TV coverage let's say like NBC Sports say hey we're going to film like NHRA does that's why NHRA is successful because they got TV coverage. You can pick your your star, your hero, and you can follow him. No one can follow me unless they know where to go. Right. Well, hey, I appreciate it. That is great insight. You're a veteran. You know that. Been there, done that. Let's make a pack. Let's figure out a way to bring them back. Let's put our heads together. And... <laughs> I had the opportunity to go to Foothill, Foothill Ranch, and it was funny. They, you know, they didn't care about the ZX14 marketing so much. They want to market things like the Z900RS. So, man, and you're a great I'm ambassador. Saying, that's what I'm saying with Kawasaki. Uh, I've been, you know, 2016 was my last year with Kawasaki because everything is entry level bikes to try to create more riders. We have to get more riders into the sport to create more sales. As good as people think motorcycling is doing right now, the motorcycle is in the toilet as far as new bike sales. The little bikes, the smaller bikes, the intellectual bikes is where Kawasaki, Suzuki, Honda are making their money. If we say 300 racing, if we want to go drag racing with 300, all the OEMs would jump in. If we say ZX-14, they don't care. Let's meet some of Ricky's students all the way from India, and then we'll see Ricky's nephew, Richard, make a pass. How's it going, bud? I'm doing good. How about you? How is it working with Ricky Gadsden? Easy, super. I and where are you from? I'm from India. What's your name? Sandeep Singh Soki. Excellent. What has Ricky taught you so far that's sticking with you? Uh, something which you've not learned in India, and we're still learning, and it's a long way to go. Learning, learning, and learning. Thank you for being here. Good luck to you guys. Thank you very much. How you doing, sir? What's your name? Where are you from? India. What's it like working with Ricky Gadsden here this weekend? So good. So good. So good? Excellent. Thank you, guys. Good luck. Gold bike.
pretty cool all the way from India, man. Thanks for making the trip to Georgia. Now it's time for Ricky's nephew, Richard Gadsden, to make a pass on that 2019 Kawasaki ZX-10. And what a great story these two are. As Ricky told you, unfortunately, his father and his brother, Richard's dad, are no longer with us. But these two are keeping the Gadsden family legacy alive. They are a tight-knit family. Ricky started Richard when he was in his early teens, and Richard has blossomed into one of the best most talented no bar racers in the world. And please, if you have any tips, questions, or comments, leave them below. Let us know where you are watching from as well. And if you have any motorcycle buddies who you think would enjoy this, please share it with them. enjoyed this video please remember to subscribe to cycle drag on youtube like cycledrag.com on facebook and we'll keep it coming we are here to promote fast motorcycles all over the world if you have any friends who you think may enjoy this please refer them they are always welcome thank you for the comments the feedback we appreciate it guys thank you for subscribing to cycle drag on youtube wait a minute is it the legendary jesse james are you really the legendary Jesse James? Sometimes, only in my own mind. What do you got on your hat? Cycle drag. You're the man. Do you watch the Cycle Drag YouTube channel? No, but you should. <laughs> we hope that you'll start watching, and I appreciate it. Yep. I hope you enjoyed this trip to school. If you liked it, please make sure to subscribe, smash the bell for notifications, like CycleDrag.com on Facebook, and we will keep it coming. Thanks so much, and we'll see you at the races.